here at Dixon, New Mexico at the Harding Pegmatite Mine. Um, I'm Evan Owen. I'm treasurer of the New Mexico Tech student chapter for SEG and here with a few buddies from a lithogeochemistry class. And this is a beautiful example of an LCT pegmatite. LCT stands for lithium cesium tantalum. And right now I'm standing in front of a large wall of predominantly spodumene, a lithium aluminosilicate mineral, which with lapidolite was the primary ore of lithium back in the day when they were mining this. Uh, this deposit also has tantalum uh, from the mineral microlite, which here is radioactive and can be found pretty effectively with a scintillator. And they also have beryl here. Now lithium, cesium, tantalum, beryllium, all of those are critical minerals. So these are uh, elements that the government has decided are critical to the uh, economic security, um, national security of the country. So it's important to try and source these uh, domestically as much as we can. So in uh, understanding about these pegmatites, we can hopefully try and find more deposits like this. Um, LCT pegmatites are pretty important uh, you know, worldwide. We have the green bushes pegmatite in Australia that produces a lot of lithium from spodumene. And then the tanco pegmatite up in Canada produces uh, most of the world's cesium. So this pegmatite, this big block of white material with some pink lapidolite in front of us, it's emplaced uh, kind of along the contact of a schist below us that we can't really see, and this dark colored amphibolite up there. So here I have a handheld gamma ray spectrometer. So this is a type of scintillation counter, but it has a computer in it that can actually tell us what the source of gamma rays that we're looking at is, whether it's from the decay of uranium, thorium, or potassium. So in this area, we're going to be looking at this one right here, which they call this the spotted rock. And you see these kind of whitish crystals of spodumene surrounded by the pinkish lapidolite. Uh, we have probably some barrel and quartz above it, but all intermixed in here and concentrated in some different little vein-like areas and whatnot are microlite. And so microlite is, in this instance, a radioactive uh, tantalum niobium oxide mineral. So right now where I'm standing, we have a background of about four to 500 counts per second. And as we walk over towards the wall, start dramatically going up, so we're about a thousand, and then here is a real hot spot. So now we're 15,000, 16,000 counts per second, and this is all due to these tiny glassy black crystals that are just all running through this rock right here. So this might represent the, uh, the ore for tantalum and niobium that they were mining back in the day, because indeed the zone is quite rich. What we're seeing here next to some beautiful, this uh, phyllosilicate little pitolite here in this purple, what you see here with all this blue is this gorgeous appetite. And these run throughout the entire system. You can see a few more over here next to this really gorgeous, again, that really gorgeous lapidolite. So uh, Madison and I are standing at the bottom of a little pit that was mined back in World War II for optical grade calcite. So this is just behind the Harding pegmatite itself. And so here's some of the probably not quite optical grade calcite that is still left after mining but it's hosted within this interestingly altered amphibolite. So we can see like down here, we have some real coarse amphiboles, and then we have a lot of this epidote alteration with some garnet in there. And it's just funky, funky stuff going on here. But uh, apparently when they were mining this, they were extracting chunks of optical grade calcite, like single crystals that were best measured in the tons. So absolutely massive. I cannot imagine what one of those would look like being pulled out. But anyway, so here's one little, little stop. Here we have a wild Madison in her element looking for calcite. <laughs>
So I think one of the best things that the SCG student chapter can do is to organize more field trips like this, to get some undergrads out here, um, you know, show them what a rare metal pegmatite looks like, uh, you know, in place here, uh, show them why this is important, you know, from an economic standpoint, um, maybe talk about some exploration methods that we could use to find some of this. Um, and there's plenty of geochemical methods that can try to hone in on pegmatites like this. Uh, you can use scintillators to look for the radioactive elements that might be present in some of these systems. So I think I think the major goal of the SEG student chapter should be you know student involvement. You know make sure that the you know older grad students are you know kind of helping out these undergrads, showing them you know the lay of the land, uh, you know exploring some cool mineral deposits here in New Mexico and elsewhere. It's just fun and exciting to get out and see some stuff you don't see every day.